Good morning and welcome to today's webinar, which goes by the name Real-Time Daily Trading Ideas. Today is March the 8th and I'm moderating our international webinar from our office in Berlin. My name is Alex Raftopoulos and I'm happy to be talking to you. Today we will be speaking about trading ideas, strategies, market screenings and we'll be answering your questions. Before we can start with the actual webinar, we will briefly present the compulsory risk disclaimer. Trading with financial instruments offered by Admiral Markets carries a high level of risk, which is not suitable for all investors due to its complex nature. Please make yourself familiar with these instruments by using a demo account if you are a starter. Please feel free to contact us if you need any assistance with that. Please also note that none of this is investment advice. Statements made in this webinar only represent the personal opinion of our traders. You can also find the whole risk disclaimer on our website. Here you can see the schedule for the week. Today it's Doug's turn. And before I finish off with the introduction, I would like to invite everyone interested in trading to try us out and benefit from the best index and forex offerings with spreads of just 0 0.8 pips. Please feel free to have a look around our website and explore our international activities and do not hesitate to contact us should you have any questions. Enough of me for the moment, now it's Dirk's turn. Good morning Dirk, how are you doing? What's your outlook of the markets for the moment? Um, okay. Okay, can you can you hear me? Yes, we can. <laughs> yes, good morning, Alex. Okay, because uh, kind of, kind of curious video because I didn't see any presentation of yours. Uh, the only thing I heard was your voice, um, so maybe there was some mistake. I don't know. <laughs> we will see later on. Maybe you can figure that out, or I will figure that out. What happened? Okay, will, let's start. <laughs> <laughs> Let's start with a couple of, of issues uh, which we, we which we already got tonight or this morning. Um, as you read the news or the ticker or the tickers, you might you may find out what happened uh, with Chinese data. So Chinese Chinese trade numbers came out and uh, yeah, pretty much like a mess. Uh, this one, um, uh, like like for example, the the February uh, export data is down 16. I'm repeating 16.6%. Uh, no joke. So um, probably there there happened some some you know, let's say some curious stuff with the with the algorithms because uh, um, before they pr printed that and published that um, and they they said plus 16 uh, and later on they said minus 16. So however you will be thinking about that and never trust Chinese data I guess. <laughs> Well, uh, at the end, um, if you if you just check out the the whole rest of the, a bunch of these Chinese data string uh, tonight, uh, you will find out that uh, there is um, a lot of a lot of problems uh, in the Chinese um, economic situation, and this will lead to maybe more trouble ahead. Um, and uh, besides the fact, you know, that a couple of months ongoing trade uh, negotiations uh, have to come to an end soon. And uh, simply the fact uh, what will happen if Mr. Trump is simply walking away f without a deal would be uh, really f falling apart everything like I told you last week. Um, last week you already spoke about a couple of markets like the DAX, like you can see that one here. I'm closing this one here, this market watch, just have more room. Um, we draw that we draw the chart um, and uh, uh, said uh, something around that 11 590s and 11 7 12 here those two uh, yeah let's say fibonacci um, projections uh, 138.2 and 161.8 that there is a room in between where the market just can simply turn around and that is really what happened and now we are just trying to figure out where this possible target, the first target to the downside might be. If you start that stuff, uh, you will be implementing a horizontal line on top and we'll find out that the 100 uh, FIP here is around that, um, close to that 11400 handle. Um, if you look at a, a couple of, um, yeah, let's say, markets we, we spoke about last week as well, you will find out that we spoke about that S&P, S&P 500, which has said that this is one of the biggest and broader markets that will, uh, let's say, uh, guide uh, the rest of the European markets as well. And you saw that yesterday happening. The ECB um, wasn't uh, something like a help uh, to the European indices and uh, besides that, not for the DAX as well. Um, 
and um, so there's cheap cheap money forever, cheap money for longer term, and uh, this didn't help the DAX. Uh, the DAX uh, tanked and went down uh, with the U.S. markets because U.S. markets are guiding the rest of the indices. And we saw that uh, last week. We um, yeah we just um, created something like this um, ellipse here, uh, where this possible um, yeah start of a, a move to the downside could happen. Um, marked that one with the red arrow last week on Friday and said that there might be something like a bump to this uh, 61.8 level here, which is around 2710. All right, back to the DAX. What will be happening uh, in the next hours to come? Um, first of all, just um, print yourself a note or write yourself a note that uh, there is a non-farm payrolls data today at 1430 CT. So this is due for uh, U US labor data going to be published. And uh, if you check out a couple of surveys, um, they might say, tell you that you will find out something like Citibank, for example, said that there might be uh, an un unemployment rate of 3.8% and um, uh, the non-farm payrolls might be coming in at 220k. So uh, that is one of those uh, of these surveys. And of course, uh, if you look at ADP data from Wednesday, um, it might be disappointing today. So you never know what what's the real outcome of this data at 1430. You will know. But um, uh, one thing we will know if if this kind of a print is uh, underneath 180, 180k, uh, it will uh, be. Uh, a bonus for the the so beaten down the road euro, so that might be helping the euro to come back a little bit to the upside. Okay, um, let's check uh, the Xetrodux board, um, which I uh, always do this uh, like this. Um, we will see resistances and supports, and of course the EMA 100 and EMA 200. And if you look at the uh, current supports, you have a support at E11443, which is the support number one. Uh, where we are really, uh, yeah, let's say we're really close here and already tested that one and we'll see uh, if we have the, uh, let's say, power to to pick up the pick up the road to this uh, pivot point, which is at 11,528. Um, one gap from the Xetrodax uh, got closed. Um, I spoke about that gap um, last Friday. And, um, and this one got close around around the levels like 11 for 25 uh, You don't see that one in a chart right here. Uh, that's a Zetrodax gap. Okay. Um, EMAs, so exponential moving averages, uh, on top of that, might be interesting to see that one in the combination with the current 100 FIP here, uh, which I uh, told you uh, that might be a, something like a little bit of more support. Uh, around that 11400 um, handle in combination with the uh, EMA 100 which is at 11364 so we might find we might find something like a stabil um, stabilization around that area so that we could possibly uh, put something like a so called blue trading box for a, a long scenario um, at the uh, levels of 11360s to 11400 handle all right just checking out. Besides that, um, besides that, um, we had that Fibonacci retracements last week. Of course, we um, said that this market is a little bit of overbought, um, which is um, on the daily perspective uh, quite close to the 70 um, RSI handle here. Good. But, um, one thing I wanted to tell you about a new market. Right, um, we spoke about Euro GBP a lot, and um, you see the long term, the long term Fibonacci analysis. Um, and I, I spoke about that 087 handles um, and these handles, uh, 61.8 handle, uh, very important from the long per term perspective. Um, changing that to the short term perspective, we also um, uh, on top of that spoke about possible targets uh, for a stronger pound. We um, spoke about that 138.2 level and 161.8 level here down the road. If you see that one, uh, the, uh, the last um, one is the 0 8480s, and if you move that horizontal line to the 138.2 level, we will find out that we almost scratched that level here. So one thing um, is that we bought um, um, a slice of Euro GBP long. Um, slice means just um, a mini, 
and um, started that one at 085, 085 uh, 50s, no, 085 50s, yes, uh, with a, t a possible target back up to the 100 line, which is close to that 86 level here. Um, why did we do that? Um, besides the fact that the time is running out for Mrs. May and uh, for the Brexit and it possibly gets into a direction of a delay, uh, that might be something like positive for the pound. But the other, other side, you got some option expiries today running in direction of 086. Um, so it might be interesting to, to be on the long side just to try to catch that direction of uh, that expiry. Uh, so you possibly could take out the, the trade at 085.90s oh, already or 085.85. Oh, so something like some, something like catching a few pips uh, to the upside. Uh, don't have anything like like uh, something like greed uh, that you may uh, try to get up the road in direction 087. Oh, this could happen, of course. But um, it's better just to to catch our, to catch a few pips and just exit just before uh, non farm payrolls, for example. Okay, this one is uh, with a stop loss of um, 085.15, so um, quite soft. Um, and uh, if, uh, all, you, all you can see that this this stop loss scenario is a little bit underneath that 138.02 Fibonacci here. Um, okay. Besides Euro GBP, um, another nice or something like a possible uh, trade setup. We uh, spoke about the Looney a couple of times here uh, at the webinars, and uh, this time it's getting more interesting again. As you can see, we are on the daily chart, and uh, as you can see, the the last candles, the last blue candles here, bullish candles. Um, um, quite heavy move up to, um, let's just count them, one, two, three, four, five, six. So we are on the seventh day in a row with um, um, with um, candles to the upside. Um, of course, um, sometimes, sometimes before we start uh, into the chart technical analysis, it might be interesting to get uh, to find out why, why this kind of a currency is so weak right now. As I'm speaking about the loonie. And um, why is this dollar um, pushing up, pushing up so much? Well, you could check out yourself if you um, simply, if you simply um, enter the, the the website of the Bank of Canada, and you will find out that um, these uh, this week's um, yeah this week's policy um, meeting um, went out this way that they didn't change anything, so that uh, policy interest rate uh, stayed at 1.75. So that's the fourth uh, time in a row with a rate of 1.75 and if you look at the fundamentals to come in the future you will just find out that the next meeting is at April 24 so a couple couple of weeks down the road uh, without being let's say surprised by a by a rate decision um, by some, some kind of a special event from the Bank of Canada so you might find out that the, you you got to be checking out uh, chart technical stuff right now um, you look you still look at the at the longer term, at the longer term um, Fibonacci retracements, and you will find out that the 61.8 level right here is now getting tested a couple of times, and um, you find out that the 61.8 level is around that 134, 35, 30, um, let's say 134.40s. So a little bit to the upside right now, and it might be interesting to be, um, yeah, let's say prepared for for a short setup at this uh, kind of a, a level. It might be interesting here um, on top um, if you um, check out your Fibonacci retracements uh, um, object list. I will just enter that one here and um, just might check out if we enter uh, another level here as we did that uh, the same at this S&P 500 last week. And simply just add and doing that with um, a 70. 6.4 level and okay why is it not working Alex help me out come on <laughs> I'm not sure why it is not working usually that's the way you do it maybe I just yeah, it is, it is. To, maybe I just forgot uh, I forgot to to implement that one here why 60 well let's let's check out that's 76.4 okay not working 
however, okay. <laughs> and, uh, however, however, it's 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 not a, a nothing like a problem. And, and the thing is that we that we are getting closer to that 135, uh, 20s and 30 levels. And um, this is a, another a thing like like a, something like a trading box I could draw um, with that um, version right here, so that we find something like this blue trading box here to 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 start. Um, 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 a turning point or a turning room, let's say it that, that way, and then you will find uh, uh, some 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 kind of arrow to the downside here as well, like we did that with the S and P. Um, so that the direction, the first direction, uh, which I'm talking about, is uh, from the upside a retest of that 61.8 and um, um, a road to the uh, 50 and 38 to the downside here. Um, inserting another arrow here. Um, to the downside, where's the arrow there, um, in direction um, of these other fib retracements. In the long run, in the long run, it is of course uh, very, ex uh, very um, uh, important uh, to check out the um, commodity prices and especially the prices of oil. Um, we all know uh, that the loonie is uh, on top, um, uh, something like a commodity currency, and if the the, the oil price, uh, let's say WTI oil price, is falling apart, uh, and, and taking the road down, uh, down, down, and down, and that would mean that would lead to to uh, yeah to more uh, a loony weakness. Um, this is the only point which is always very important to see. But if you check the uh, the the current um, technicals, especially we will just implement that relative strength index here on the daily as well. Okay, and um, doing that stuff with um, moving averages on top. Where's the trend? Moving average and implementing the 100 line and the 200 line as well. Where is it? Trend moving average 200 and of course changing the color uh, to whatever some ugly pink or let's say this way, okay. So this is possible. This is possible that we um, that we have something like a like a room where this this trade could where this trade could um, um, yeah lead to, which means that we uh, enter a room between the 132.50s and 132.0 uh, or even a retest of that old 61 scenario which we had already tested at. 131.70s here. Um, this won't be uh, something like a trade for a couple of hours uh, or just one or two days. Um, we all know that sometimes these currency markets need a bit of a time. So um, be aware of the fact that you um, have a look at your swap uh, every day. Um, be aware that you have to look um, on your risk and money management if you are able to, uh, let's say, to to um, do something like a, a two-way strategy, so um, starting with a short um, setup right now and adding something like a 135.20s if it comes to that. Uh, so two versions um, um, of a way of trading that um, currency pair here. All right, next one is the Euro-US dollar. Um, big surprise to the downside. Well, is it? Um, the surprise, the surprise, um, possibly is uh, the way of of the the talk, the ECB press conference. Um, they spoke about the, the the further down the road, cheap money, um, until the rest of the year. There won't be any change um, um, at the interest rate. So, um, uh, in the end, in the end, nothing like very very big surprises because they spoke about T L T R O, so that targeted targeted long-term refinancing operations, especially for, for uh, Spanish, but uh, more important for Italian banks. And um, these special tenders are going to be uh, launched in direction September. Um, how they will work and how they will be implemented, this is something like they spoke, will be speaking about the next um, yeah, meetings in direction to June, they said. That's Let's see what we will be finding out then. But uh, one thing, of course, one, uh, one thing, of course, is from the forward guidance, which they really moved further down the road in direction 2020 
uh, with the first uh, rate hike. So this is something like very disappointing for the euro. And uh, on top of that, uh, which, is, which is very, very much more disappointing is um, the guidance for uh, GDP, GDP projections and uh, inflation projections because they revised that down the road as well and spoke about a weaker, a weaker GDP uh, in the next years to come, in 2019 and the next years to come, and with weaker inflation uh, in uh, in 2019 and the next years to come. So that has an effect on the euro, and um, besides that, an effect on the bond markets as well. And you have to be checking out the levels between U.S. bonds and European leading bonds, and we'll be seeing that there is a shift, and that lead uh, that that led uh, simply to a weaker euro. And what is uh, what is interesting right now? Um, of course, if you trade, um, um, and I did so, and I crashed with that first. Uh, try um, to to have a long setup at the at the last at the last area of that uh, one twelve fifteen, uh, one twelve forty levels, and fifty levels. And um, this is um, this is uh, something uh, typically. Um, you you got a level. Everybody is watching that level. Everybody is watching the same chart, and everybody is seeing that uh, the long term long term low was one twelve fifty. And so everybody tries to be stopped around that one or um, close to that one, a little bit underneath, a little bit un uh, above. But in the end, um, there's something like a big rush or a big clean up um, with a stop a stop losses, and that's what we were, what we simply saw yesterday. And uh, it, it really it, it really got very fast, and you see that last needle here. Maybe you just open that one um, or just widening that one, going to more detailed versions like the hour chart. And you see that, um, um, especially uh, the last the last candle to the downside, very strong push to the downside to clean up the whole stuff. And now we are working on getting a little bit more stabilization back up. Um, which could lead us, which could lead us to uh, a couple of levels like uh, 11250 and um, uh, very close to that 113 handle, which is the 61.8 level here from the uh, old charting, uh, charting analysis, which is, if you look at the daily, uh, still wallet because you have the old low and the old high and the projections um, showing you that we are still in that room, uh, hovering around that room. So, um, what on top is interesting that um, a couple of those option expires today um, are around 112.50s in direction 112.70s. So it might be not too 100% uh, not too wrong to try to catch uh, a, a room up there. So it might be interesting to to enter around yeah around that level right here um, and um, to to target to target levels like 112.50s. Uh, direction 112.70s um, for try for um, a little bit of a relief move to the upside. Um, needless to say, this is very very important uh, to check the time and don't try um, setups like that around around or a little uh, little close to that 14.30 CET today because of the non-farm payrolls. If that if that uh, currency pair really takes another hit down the road, uh, let's say 50 to 90 pips as well, then it might be a, a, a better risk or reward to, to re-enter a long scenario and to try to get that next relief move upside. Um, um, it's always nicer not to 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 be long on a, let's say on a already a little bit of a move upside. It's the same thing. Don't be shorting the lows. It's always dangerous. Um, that's the the thing. Um, I would just recommend not to do that. Uh, just to reshort. Maybe uh, nothing. Uh, interesting interesting version of a, a reshort a version would be a level around that levels we spoke about that expiries between 112.50 and 112.70s in very close to that one um, that 61.8 level. I'm just shaping that blue stuff here. Um, that's um, a possible a possible target zone for a relief to the upside, but as well a possible next enter uh, for a, a reshort down the road, which would uh, then uh, lead us to, to get to 138.2 to um, and to 161.8 level, which is at 111.20s, 111, uh, yes, 111.20s. All right. Um, I spoke about a couple of markets. Maybe I just forgot one. Let's just check that out. Oh, yes, we spoke 
we didn't speak here um, about the Aussie. Um, last week I told you that we might have a, re a recheck of that levels around the 070 handle and uh, uh, really that happened um, around the level of the 138.2 Fibonacci projection to the downside and this one already got, yeah, let's say already tested. Um, another way uh, of overdoing it to the, other, to the downside would be the 161.8 level in direction of 6950s but um, let's see. Let's see it as an opportunity to re, uh, long this uh, stuff here and to be uh, looking for um, a retest of that 61.8 level here as well. Uh, and on top on top of that, and let's just check out via market watch what is happening with gold. And um, yeah, let's say gold gold really rushed up the road. It might be interesting. Um, of course, it's Friday. Uh, it's interesting to. It's interesting to see um, if, if gold is really, really able to, to re-stabilize around that 1300 level and to get that levels around uh, 1302 um, as a hurdle uh, to, to get the next steps done. So that would lead, that would lead to more stable um, Aussie as well. Um, commodity currency, typically when gold is rushing up, Aussie is running up as well. Um, one thing for sure, um, I forgot, yes, next week, have a look at your calendar. Um, besides uh, a couple of US data like consumer inflation and like like um, um, a couple of um, industry data and, and real estate data from the US, you might find out that we have the third Friday, the third Friday in a row in March, and that means that we have a quadruple witching day. So. Um, the, the roads might be getting more bumpy in direction to that quarter bull witching day and um, you might be interested to check out a couple of levels in the kind of markets you want to trade, for example a German DAX, for example a couple of other markets in Europe or single stocks as well, it depends what you're up to. you find a lot of information at the Eurex website and uh, I'm sure if you have some data uh, on top of that, um, you will find out a couple of levels where the open interest is quite huge and it might lead you to you know, have your conclusions to be short or to be long the one or other way. Okay, yes Alex, um, pretty much done. Closing very, very on point, 11.28. Perfect. 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 <laughs> um, you've actually answered all the questions that were posted, so there's no questions left. Okay, perfect. Fantastic. Right. <laughs> perfect. Then. Thank you very much for your comprehensive analysis, Dirk. Thanks to the audience for listening. I hope you enjoyed today's webinar. If you did enjoy it and would like to review it, you can do so anytime. Just give us an hour or so to upload it onto YouTube. And sorry, Dirk, I always have to mute you because um, otherwise we would kind of interrupt each other. I hope you don't mind that. <laughs> no, no problem. But, <laughs> yeah, right. guys, so hopefully you, you, will, you will enjoy um, your weekend. Hopefully we will uh, be uh, having a, a sunny weekend and, um, and of course, um, have a, a, first of all, have a, uh, have a nice trading day, um, NFP day today. <laughs> um, be patient um, and uh, try to, to catch a move and don't um, be prepared too much because sometimes markets can go crazy and all your preparations are just, um, yeah, be thrown out of the window. Sometimes it's easy, just easy to, to, to watch this and see the market is uh, really walking into your direction and then just pick up a trade. That's all I can say today. And um, of course, um, next week, same, same um, um, date 11 CET. Um, 15th of March, so the quadruple witching day. Um, let's see where the markets are uh, hovering around. Uh, interesting to see if the DAX is uh, still at that level. Um, really curious to, to know that. <laughs> um, and uh, on top of that, um, um, if, you, if you see that um, Euro GBP trade um, um, already is in the green, so don't overdo. If you like to, just take it out. And uh, it's something like beer money. It's weekend, so enjoy. Thank you very much. <laughs> Perfect. Thank you. Have a good weekend, guys. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.